Good morning, Spirit of God Christian Church, and welcome to another Spirit-filled virtual worship service. It's a new year, and for Spirit of God, it's a year of trusting God to do all that He pleases. Thank you so much for joining us this morning and for staying committed to our virtual services. At any point throughout the service, feel free to leave a comment in the chat, say hello to your church family, or simply say amen. If it's your first time tuning in, welcome! Like and share today's service across all of your social media as it helps spread and show what God is doing here at Spirit of God Christian Church. Before we continue on with today's service, here are a few announcements. Ladies, we are excited about women's ministry that will be held today at 5 p.m. via Zoom, so please join us. Lady Joyce Madison of Agape Temple of Faith in Orlando, Florida will be our special guest presenter. So please mark your calendars and prepare your hearts for a wonderful session with our Sisters in Christ. This first Sunday, we are also holding in-person service at 10 a.m. Come and worship with us. Join us for Zoom Bible study each Thursday night at 7 p.m. Remember, questions are always welcome and be sure to invite someone to dive into the Word of God with you. Good morning, everyone. I'm Deacon Derek Madison. And before we get into corporate prayer, there's two things that I really want to share with you today. The two things is this, God hears. God has heard you. He's heard your prayer. He's heard your cry. He's heard your petition. He's heard what you've put before him. And the second thing is God knows. He knows what you're going through. He knows what you're dealing with. He knows what you need. He knows what the answer is to whatever your questions are. God knows. God has heard you. He's heard you when you're in your car and you've cried out to him. He's heard you when you're walking around in your house and you're seeking answers. You're seeking wisdom from on high. You really want to know what to do. You want to do the right thing. God has heard you. God knows what you need and he's sent the answer. The two scriptures that we want to look at today. The first one is Daniel 10 and it's the 12th verse. And it says this, then he said to me, do not fear Daniel for from the first day, that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God. Your words were heard and I have come because of your words. What I want you to know is when you first begin to set your heart to understand, to know, to inquire of God, God said he heard you from the first day. He said, I heard you. He said, and I've sent the answer. Yes, we know sometimes the answer was held up, but God said he sent the answer because of your words. God heard you. And then the second scripture we want to look at is found in Matthew. And it's the sixth chapter and the eighth verse. It's a familiar scripture. And I really want us to focus on the second part. The first part, Jesus is teaching about prayer, but he said, don't be like them. He said, for your father knows exactly what you need, even before you ask him. God said he knows exactly what you need. So I don't want you to be worried today that the answer isn't coming soon enough because God heard you. The answer is coming. It may be held up. But God said the answer to what you've asked is coming. And he also said that he knows exactly what you need even before you ask him. So yes, while you were in your car, he saw the tears and he heard your petition. While you were walking around the house, he heard you and he knows what you need. While you were on your job, sitting at your desk, God said he heard you and he knows exactly what you need and the answer is coming. With that in mind, let's go into corporate prayer. 
Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you and we praise you for who you are. God, we thank you because you are omniscient. You know everything. God, nothing is hidden from you. God, nothing escapes you. God, you are aware of everything that we're going through. And God, we thank you because you are all powerful. You know the answers to what we need. And God, we came today just to hear from you. God, we believe, hallelujah, that an answer will come to the request and the petitions of your people, even on today. Father, we believe that an answer will come through your spoken word by your servant. God, we believe that an answer will come through praise and worship. God, we believe that an answer may even come through this prayer. But God, we believe for an answer to come today. For God, you know what we stand in need of even before we ask. Father, we thank you because you are great and greatly to be praised in all the earth. God, we know there is none like you. There is none beside you. And so, Father, we came today just to give you praise. God, just to give you glory, just to honor you, to let you know we love you and we appreciate you. God, we magnify your holy name. God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for how you are. We thank you for all that you are. We thank you for all that you are doing in the lives of your people. Father, we just came today to hear from you. God, we came today to hear an answer from you for you know what we're going through. Father, we just believe you for an answer on today. God, we pray over your servant that will speak your word on today. God, we pray over our pastor. We ask that you continue to bless him. Father, pour back into him. God, continue to increase him with wisdom and understanding. We thank you for a pastor and a first lady. God, who has a heart for your people, who have a heart for you. God, we thank you for them. We ask that you pour back into them, Father, the wisdom and the understanding that they need. God, we pray that you continue to anoint them, that you continue to bless them, that you continue to pour back into their lives. Father, continue to pour back into their marriage. Father, continue to bless them, for you know what they stand in need of. Father, we pray for every person that is hearing this service on today. God, you know the needs of your people. Father, if there's healing, Father, we believe you for health and healing. Father, if it's financial, Father, we believe you for the answers that we need, Father, for financial help. Father, if it's, if it's just peace and restoration, Father, we believe you for restoration. We believe you for wisdom, Father, on the words that we need to say. Father, we just thank you right now. God, we pray that you have your way in this service. God, that you be glorified. Father, that everything that is said will give you glory on this, on this day. And Father, we just believe that at the end of the day, Father, we'll say it was good to have been in the presence of the Lord. And Father, we'll give your name all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor in Jesus name mighty name we pray amen and amen there's nothing worth more Never come close, no thing can compare. Your living hope, your present love. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of love. When my heart becomes free and my chains are undone, your presence, Lord, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Come flood this place and feel the Your glory, God, is 
Good morning, friends. I pray that you're all doing wonderful today. It's Miss Chelsea again, and I'm super excited to be back today with another lesson from the Lord for our youth. Today's lesson is entitled, The Holy Spirit Works in Us. Do any of you like superhero shows or movies? Well, let's see how well we know these fictional superheroes. First, we have Mr. Clark Kent. Clark is an average person until he turns into none other than Superman. But where does Superman get his power? Well, since Superman is a native of Krypton, a planet that had a red sun, when he's under the yellow sun, like that of our Earth, his Kryptonian cells act as living solar batteries, absorbing solar energy and giving him superhuman powers. Wow. Next, we have none other than Diana Prince. Diana is an average person until she turns into you guessed it, Wonder Woman. Where do you think Wonder Woman gets her power from? Well, Wonder Woman is an Amazon and was granted her powers by the Greek gods, in particular Aphrodite, who created the Amazons, a race of female warriors in Greek mythology. Last but not least, we have T'Challa. T'Challa is an average person until he turns into the Black Panther. But where does the Black Panther get his powers? He gets his superhuman powers from the arc-shaped earth, a Wakanda plant that grants enhanced abilities and links each Black Panther spiritually to the Panther God fast. Unfortunately, all of these superheroes are not real. They're fictional. Their characters have been made up just to entertain us. Many of us have thought about what superpower we would like to have if we were fictional superheroes. But did you know that every Christian has a superpower? Yes, it's true. We have the power of the Holy Spirit that lives inside us. Today, we will learn how the Holy Spirit helps us think, speak, and act in ways that honor God. As we have been studying Paul's letter to the believer in Rome, we learned how God's grace was shown to us by Jesus Christ. Because we were sinners and we did not deserve God's grace, but he gave it freely to all. This week, we will examine the end of Paul's letter where he wrote about the Holy Spirit to the believers in Rome and reminded the Christians of what the Holy Spirit does for them. Before we get into these things, we will first make sure we know who the Holy Spirit is. The Trinity says that we have one God and three persons, God the Father, God the Son, or Jesus, and God the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes into a person's life when he or she accepts and trusts God for the forgiveness of his or her sins. He is there and he will be with us at all times to help us do things that God commands. He teaches us, guides us, and does many other things for us. In fact, the very name of the Holy Spirit is the Helper. Let's just think of him as our Helper. So now that we know who the Holy Spirit is, Let's discuss some of the ways the Holy Spirit helps us lead a life that's pleasing to God. Romans chapter 8, verses 10 through 11 reads, But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to our mortal bodies because of the Spirit who lives in you. This scripture tells us that the Holy Spirit gives every Christian the power to overcome sin. Before we accepted and trusted in Jesus Christ, we were bound to our sin. But because of what Jesus did on the cross, we are free. God knew we would struggle with one our own way, so he sent the Holy Spirit to live in every single believer. He helps us overcome sin. He is the one who gives us that feeling of sadness or uncomfortableness when we make a wrong choice. When we know we have sinned, we should pray to God, confess our sin, and ask for forgiveness. Romans chapter 8 verses 12 through 14 reads, Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh, to live according to it. 
For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the mysteries of the body, you will live. For those who are led by the spirit of God are the children of God. This scripture tells us that the Holy Spirit leads us in the right way. God's way. God's words in the Bible are instructions for living in the right way. The Holy Spirit helps us remember and understand these words. The Holy Spirit will never lead us to do anything against what the Bible says. For example, if you're thinking about stealing a candy bar and realize no one is watching, the Holy Spirit will be the one to remind you that God's word says not to steal. The Holy Spirit will help us say no to sin and yes to God's way. He has the power to help us, so let's let him. Romans chapter 8 verses 23 through 24 reads, As we believers also groan, even though we have the Holy Spirit within us as a foretaste of future glory, for we long for our bodies to be released from sin and suffering. This scripture tells us that the Holy Spirit guarantees our future. Do any of you know what the word guarantee means? It's a promise that certain conditions will be fulfilled. For example, if an item has a guarantee, that means the company promises that it will do what they say it will do. As believers, we are given the guarantee or promise of an eternal life in heaven. When our life on earth is over, our new life in heaven with God begins. Have you ever been so sad or overwhelmed that you didn't even have the words to say how you were feeling or even know what to ask God for help with? When we are going through tough times like this, the Holy Spirit prays for us. Romans chapter 8 verses 26 through 27 reads, In the same way, the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. God knows our hearts and what we're going through, and the Holy Spirit pleads on our behalf. Romans chapter 8 verse 28 reads, And we know that all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. This verse gives us the promise from God that he will cause all things to work together for our good. How comforting is that for Christians? Let's do a quick recap. So we learned that the Holy Spirit helps us lead a life pleasing to God by giving every Christian the power to overcome sin, leading us in the right way, which is God's way, guaranteeing our future and helping us with our prayers. So remember, we as believers all have the supernatural power known as the Holy Spirit to help us live a life pleasing to God. So, as a believer, I'm a superhero. As a believer, you're a superhero. As believers, we're all superheroes in God's eyes through the power of the Holy Spirit that lives within us. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Thanks for watching and have a blessed week. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Spirit of God Christian Church. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place, come feel the atmosphere. Your presence is what our hearts long for. And I am so grateful this morning for the presence of the Holy Spirit, not only in song, but especially in that marvelous youth lesson today. The supernatural superpower of the Holy Spirit. Oh, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here within. Empower us to do a great work for you. Good morning. I'm Pastor Randall Knight and Pastor Spirit of God Christian Church. And I am just so grateful and so thankful to have all of you on this morning with us to enjoy this virtual service and to be edified and empowered this day. I want to thank Deacon Derek Madison for a marvelous Corporate prayer. If you're just tuning in, please go back and listen to that and know that God hears and God knows. Amen. And I thank God for Marcus and Cece and that song that was so appropriate to lead us right into just a fantastic youth lesson. Like I said, if you just tuned in, you missed a really great word 
for our youth, but also for our adults on just the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit within us. I thank God for Chelsea just organizing and constructing that lesson in such a way that it was so engaging and edifying at the same time. What a marvelous work. Y'all just give God praise for her. And we thank God for her stepping into that role, serving in that role in such an excellent way. But more importantly, in edifying and educating our young people today on the Holy Spirit and edifying and educating us as adults as well. That was a great word that ministered to all of us of all ages. That's why I'm telling you, if you just tuned in, please go back. Listen to the youth lesson. Have your children. If you have children, sit down with them and have dialogue with them after the youth lesson. Make sure you do that. The Bible even tells us to sit and, and, and sit with our kids and talk to them about the word of the Lord. And then certainly corporate prayer was a magnificent blessing to all of us today. And I thank Deacon Derek Madison, who serves so faithfully and so wonderfully in this house, as do Cece and Marcus Chelsea as well. But I thank all of you for tuning in today. And I don't take your presence for granted online. I thank God for the virtual service. Y'all can talk about me all you want to, but I'm telling you the virtual service is a blessing and it has been a blessing. I thank God for my members who have just given me words of encouragement about the virtual service. That there's worse things in the world than the virtual service. I understand. Yes, we like to meet in person, but we're going to do what the Lord says do. We're going to obey the Lord. But I'm going to tell you something. One of the great blessings of the virtual service is that with gas being, it's not why we do it. But here's a byproduct of it. Here's a benefit of it. Just like last week, we lost an hour of sleep with daylight savings time. It was very cold here in the local area. And you didn't have to put the $5 a gallon worth of gas or use that up in your tank to drive the service as we are really more of a church that's been always been more of a commuter church than a community church, being that our members come from so many different places within the metro Atlanta area. But we're able to still reach out virtually. And even at that this morning, again, it's not why we're not doing having in-person service. But again, it's one of those benefits. It's not why I give my tithes and offerings. But the benefit of me giving my tithes and offerings, I do that out of obedience. But a benefit is that I get to write it off on my taxes. Somebody say amen. Amen. That's just a benefit of it. It's not why I do it. But it's a benefit of it. One of the benefits of the virtual service was last week when you lost an hour and it was cold and you were in your bed. Amen. You were still at church on time. Preach, boy. I know. Amen. You didn't have that gas that you would have used. God said, I want you to use that to go to work. I want you to use that to go get some food for those kids. See, again, it's not why I do it, but it's a benefit to what God is doing. And he's still blessing. The virtual service. Amen. Amen. If you're not a subscriber, Spirit of God Christian Church, as Chelsea told you earlier, hit that subscribe button. Go ahead and subscribe and then share this. And I want you, if you got kids that you know would, be, would benefit from that lesson, you know people who would benefit from that prayer, people who would benefit from that song this morning, go back, share it with them. Share this service with them so they can be blessed just like you are. A couple of just quick housekeeping issues. I want to thank everybody who came out for baptism. Uh, last week we had one person, Kyle and Harvin who was baptized and it was a great time in the Lord, a great young man who wanted to make a public declaration of who Jesus Christ was in his life. He was surrounded obviously by his family, his siblings, his mom, as well as his church family as well. And so we had a great time in the Lord um, with, um, with the baptism of Kyle and Harvin. And I just thank God for that. And I just, I just praise God uh, again when somebody desires to make that public declaration and respond to salvation by getting baptized. I want to thank our brother Antonio Newman for yesterday's lesson with the men. Always do, does a phenomenal job with that and with that ministry. So we thank God uh, for him and pray God will just continue to restore back uh, to him all that he pours out in that ministry. Also today, I'm excited for the women's ministry. Today we have a virtual lesson uh, online for the women's ministry with Lady Joyce Madison of Agape Temple of Faith in Orlando, who is going to be uh, um, the one who is a special presenter. She is an anointed woman of God. I don't say that by too many folks. I don't put people up in front of the spirit of God who I don't trust with the word myself. That's why you've seen uh, Derek Madison, who is her son. Amen. You've seen Elder Thompson when I present it or put somebody up in front of the spirit of God to deliver something or, or minister in, in, in any way or share a word. Antonio Newman with the men. I'm, I don't take that lightly and I wouldn't put anybody up that I wouldn't trust with the word myself. I trust 
Lady Joyce Madison with the word of God, and I trust her with the word that the Lord has for the women of Spirit of God this afternoon at five o'clock. Spirit of God, ladies, I pray that you will tune in, and I pray, I know if you tune in, you're going to be blessed. Amen. And I'm going to tell you like the old saints used to say when I was growing up in church, if you miss this, you're going to miss a blessing. Amen and amen. So five o'clock, that information is on the church's app and website. The link is there for Zoom. Uh, and so, ladies, I just pray that you will have a marvelous time in the Lord, that you will hear what thus saith the Lord through the one who God has anointed to, to share something with you this afternoon. Now, <clears throat> also, just a reminder, I want to let you know we're going to, uh, the plan is we're going to meet in person on April 3rd and 17th, uh, first Sunday and, and Resurrection Sunday of the coming month. And so we just want to thank God uh, for that again. And, and again, you know, as we kind of con continue to look at doing what we're going to do, there are certain things that got to be in place that we need to make sure. I need to know who, you know, who's who's returning, need to know who's going to be willing to serve. Again, you know, uh, our youth ministry still ne has needs. Uh, again, there's still we ushers, everything like that. We still have to know those things. So even as we go back in increments or if we go back at the pace that the Lord has us, amen, we still got to make sure that those who are going to serve are going to serve. And, and listen, if the Lord is pricking on your heart, then you need to reach out info at spirit of God, cc.org, call the church and number, leave a message or something and let us know that you're willing to serve or willing to, to go back to the role that you maybe once served in as spirit of God, Christian church, uh, prior to the pandemic so that we can make sure we feel those roles. And it doesn't fall upon just the faithful few who are willing to do that. And again, uh, even especially at that 815 time that we and I, I've always participated in that setup time is always there's always a, there's always room for setup help. Amen. Amen. And amen. We we're there. We're going to do we're going to commit to do what we what we are supposed to do. But that is that piece there is not an easy task, but it does get done. And again, we, we certainly have uh, our brothers who certainly help us with the pack up piece as well. But amen, amen, amen. Just keep that in your hearts and in mind. All right. So I want to keep going now and just go right through the word today. Again, Derek Madison is ministered in such an effective way. CC has, Chelsea has. I'm just going to try to do my best not to mess nothing up today on this service. But there is a word from the Lord and I want to I want to share this with you. I'm going to read one scripture at length. Uh, it's about 11 verses. And then we're going to I'm going to give you my title. And we're going to go into what the Lord has for us today. And I just pray that it will bless you because a lot of us probably struggle with uh, with this piece. And, and I think that God has given us a word on what to do, how to do it, how to handle it. And some of the things that we need to look for in it. Ecclesiastes, one of the books of wisdom, Ecclesiastes, uh, chapter three, verses one through 11 to everything. There is a season, a time. That's our key word today, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace, a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear, to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. What profit has the worker from that with, in which he labors? I have seen the God given task which, uh, with which the sons of men are to be occupied. Verse 11, he has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity in their hearts, except that no one can find out the work that God does from the beginning to end. Amen. 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 I'm going to I'm going to preach to you today from these words. Trust the timing of God. It's perfect. Trust the timing of God. It's perfect. Not your timing, not my timing. The timing of God is perfect. You know, um, my wife would always tell me that, that her parents would always say to her, which is something I thought it's kind of interesting. I'm thinking of just reading through Ecclesiastes and preparing this. It did a time and place for everything. 
And as you saw, the Ecclesiastes writer was, was simply laying out that there is a time and place for everything. And I thank God that, that, that we had some, some saints with some wisdom who understood it just wasn't, you know, there was a time and place for everything. Everything wasn't to be done at a particular time. But in other words, that there was timing. But I want us to understand as believers in Jesus Christ, as followers of God Almighty, that we must trust the timing of God. I know that there are things that happen in life. There are things that we so desire, but we have to learn to trust the timing of God to bring those to pass so that they can yield what he desires. I know you've been waiting a long time. I know you've been praying about it. I know you've been fasting about it. I know you've been petitioning. I know you've been reading about it. I know you got a scripture and a song about it. But God says at the appointed and at the appropriate time, I will do all that I said I would do. And that's the thing we need to understand. And here is where we get into trouble. We don't, as James and, and, and James, it tells us, it tells us, we don't let patience have its perfect work. Right. We don't do that. We get impatient. And, and again, certainly I've told you all over the years how impatient I am, but I've learned. That if I'm going to walk with God, I got to learn to be patient. But here's the thing I want us to understand is that, but God's timing is perfect. Because here's what we don't understand sometimes is that God is working things behind the scenes. God is putting things together. That God is orchestrating and designing and bringing things to completion so that when we get it at the appropriate time, it's ready. Nobody wants to eat a meal that's undercooked. Nobody wants to eat a meal that's overcooked, right? See, both of those can make you sick, but a meal that is cooked in the proper time, amen, will nourish you and empower you to do things and to go further. It's the same thing with the blessings of God. We have to learn to trust the timing of God. If it's not time, it's just not time. Amen. Hey, man, what you going to do? You know, listen, I'm going to share this with you that the Lord shared with me one time. God, you know, this taking a long time. He said, well, go ahead, Randall, go ahead. Just, I mean, you ain't got to wait on, you don't have to wait on me. I gave you free will choice. You go right ahead. Go, go, go. You go. <laughs> and I looked and I was like, Peter, where can I go? You have the words of life. Where can I go without you? No, I don't, I don't want to go without you. Then why are you rushing me? You see, and now fortunately for me, I didn't get the Job chapter 38 through 40 conversation. Who is this that questions me without knowledge? Stand up. Hey, see, I didn't get that. God showed me a lot of grace and mercy in that. All he told me was you can go. Go without me, but you can go. So I learned, let me stand down. So something that I learned in the midst of while I waited, because see, when you get people who are, you know, amen, touched by an angel like me, who just, you know, we get a little frizzy when we got to wait and get impatient and we want things done and we, we need to be occupied. You know how every now and then you, you see a child that's like that and you, you got to get them something to do. Amen. Because they might tear something up if you don't. Amen. God says, see, uh -uh, I, I need to let me walk with you. Let me work with you a little bit on some things. So I learned a couple of things. I'm going to have a media team put them all up together at one time, just in the essence of time. Because, again, I want to make sure that we hit what we need to hit today while you wait on God. And for that timing piece to take place, worship God. Oh, worship will do it for you. I'm here to tell you. See, because when my mind is on who he is, I'm not, that, that, you know what, what it does is it helps me solidify that I, I certainly should wait on him because he's worthy of worship. Then I, I make sure I walk with God. You know, Adam walked with God in the cool day. There was a fellowship. There was a communion. There was a communication that was going on. There was an intimacy that was going on. God, see, you know, when, and that's really what God was saying was, see, if you're waiting on me, you got to walk with me. That means then you walk at my pace. I don't walk at yours. See, this messed a lot of people up. I'm trying to tell you, because when people do things too soon, that's why even the word will remind us in the wisdom books, in Proverbs, that inheritance gained too quickly comes to nothing, that it comes to naught. Here's the thing. You, some things you just can't get too soon. Hey, Amen. Think about this. You know, a lot of you are doing very well in your lives. You know what? If you had had the income, hey, amen, at 19 or 20 that you have now, you wouldn't have nothing. Preach, boy. 
Amen. Oh, you got to learn to walk with God at the pace of God and allow God to bless after he's processed some stuff in that walking. In that time of walking with God, I'm here to tell you, he will work with you on some stuff. He will get you better in preparation for it. Then you got to work unto God. In that time while you're waiting, get, be busy about the kingdom, not just anything, the kingdom. Amen. And then, of course, witness for God. Look, when I'm working for God, then I'm automatically, amen, becoming a great witness for God. And I'm showing others because here's the reason why this is important, because there are other people who may who may be on milk and you're on meat, as the Bible would say. In other words, who may not be as mature in Christ as you are. They're watching how you're waiting. Amen. Oh, yeah. They're watching how you're waiting. And if you frantic or if you're if you're taking chances, or if you just dismiss God and go on to your own plan, what you're telling them is as a witness is you don't have to wait on God. God said, no, no, no. I want you to learn. You got to trust my timing because my timing is perfect. I've watched many of my members who went through some challenges and went through some changes who desired to be parents. But then God did it at the appropriate time, not at the time that the church folk want to tell them they need to be having babies. Preach round. I'm going to get off this because see, I've even got upset now. Amen. Amen. Somebody say help and pull him back in. Amen. Y'all need to leave folks alone about that. Just because they're a young married couple. You don't know the timing of God for them to have children. Or if the timing of God is for them to ever have children, leave them folk alone. OK, let me move on. Why are you waiting on God? Worship him. Worship him. Walk with God. Amen. Work unto God. Be busy about some kingdom stuff. Not don't don't be a busy body. Amen. And then make sure, hey, amen, you got a great witness for God. Oh, preach, Randall. I'm trying, Lord. I, I, listen, here's what I want you to understand. I've learned this because I've had to live this as a, just a naturally impatient person. But the timing of God is perfect. And when you trust it, you'll see some things. And I'm going to share this with you, and then I'm going to go into my last set of points, and I'm going to get out your way. Listen, and I know y'all y'all going to just have to get tired of this till the day I die. Say, I got so tired of Pastor talking about that land in a pandemic, he just got on my nerves. I, okay, oh well, sorry. But listen, let me tell you why, because I learned about the timing of God in that. A year and a half before then, we had a contract on that same property. God, contract fell through, we weren't ready, it wasn't the timing of God. Pandemic hit, God brought it back around. God provided, God set some things up, and in the midst of it, God said, see, if I had done it beforehand, if I had done it beforehand, you would have walked in with a lot of different obligations. If I had done it beforehand, you weren't ready. You did not have some of the reserves that you needed to make this manageable and doable. If I had done it beforehand, I wouldn't have got the same level of glory because it would have been at your pace and not mine. But when I did it in a time of famine, when I did it in a pandemic, when I took a little old church, when banks didn't want to loan money to people who had tons and who were in for profit businesses, then I took a non profit business and I made something happen that only I could do. Guess who got the glory for it? Because the timing was perfect. Hey, God said, oh, yeah, I'm setting you up. For some stuff in your life that I desire to do at the right time for my glory. So you can grow in faith. You can have a great testimony. God said, but I'm going to get all the glory for it. All right, here we go within <laughs> the proper timing of God. There is a couple of things. There is first the promise of God. Within this, I want you to understand. I, I know why you're waiting. I want you worshiping, walking with God, working unto God, being a witness for God. No doubt about that. But within that timing, you're going to see some things in the proper timing of God. There is the promise of God. There's a promise that God gives us in that. And there are times in your life you just got to hold to the promise about. He told Abram about this time next year, Sarah will give birth to a son. Oh, yeah. And Isaac was at that appointed time. Make no mistake about it. I, 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 listen, I've watched God do this in real time. I've watched God make promises or promise and deliver on them. But they were at the proper time. Amen. What, what words you got for me on that? Listen, here's a promise that I, that I can give you in, in, while you're waiting on God or, or in the proper timing of God. And I want you to look at this. Lamentations chapter three, verse 25 says this. 
The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. Oh, that'll preach all day, won't it? Listen, I don't listen. I can stop right now. You'll be good. Oh, yeah. That's a promise. You can hold on to that. God's word says I'm good. He, the Lord is good to those who wait for him. Not those who jump the guns. Amen. All right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, even in track and field, that's that's a violation. Amen. Amen. You, you jump the gun. That's a violation. You out the race. Oh, no. God said, I got a race for you, but but I need for you to wait on me. And if you wait on me, God said, this is the God of heaven who everything he made, he looked and said it was good. He says, guess what? Here's another promise I got for you. I'm going to be good to those that wait for me, to the soul who seeks him. Oh, yeah, God, I'm seeking. I'm, I'm seeking you in your pace. God, I'm trying to stay in step with you. God, I want to make sure that I walk with you, that I stay in step with you in the midst of this. God says, well, I promise you this. If you'll wait on me, if you, you'll hold and you'll trust my timing, God says, I'm going to be good to you. Now, listen, he could say, it'll just come to pass. No, God asked today. He says, the Lord is good to those who wait for him. <laughs> Amen. Not wait for what I say or how my plan is. I wait for him. Now, here, here's what I'm just saying. While I'm waiting for him, that means then I got to move when he moves. All right. But I'm waiting for him because he's going to be good. See, I don't want I don't want to miss it. I say it's like this. I don't want to miss the good train. Amen. You know, if you ever catch martyr here in Atlanta and trains and everything like that. Yeah, it's a train that'll come by. But if that's the train that God is on, because I've been seeking him and I've been waiting on him and he has come. I got to get on that train because if I miss that train, I'm going to miss the good train. It doesn't mean another train may not come, but it's not the good train. I've been waiting on you, God. So God says, when I say I'm here, let's go. Amen. All right. Within the proper timing of God, there is then the presence of God. There's the promise of God. I hold God going to be good to me. Oh, absolutely. Because I'm waiting on him. Whose soul seeks and my soul seeks you. But here's the thing. God says, here's here's the other thing I'm going to give you in 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 the course of proper time. You'll know my presence is there. Oh, isn't that magnificent? So what God says is for, for the impatient people. For the people who just feel like it's been too long, for the people who have this sense of urgency and this angst, this anxiety that takes over you because it's not happening in the time or as quickly as you would like. Or you feel like maybe even you miss God. God says, no, 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 don't worry about it. You, you can rest and you can lean on my presence. My presence will be there. Here it is. Isaiah 40, 31. And I know it's a familiar scripture, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. What he's saying is, look, even when you get tired, see, my presence is with you always. But even when you get tired, he says, I will turbo boost my presence. In other words, I'll renew your strength. I always call this your second wind. I call this when God gives you this, this supernatural power, that the power of the Holy Spirit that allows me to supersede my natural ability because I'm weary and I'm tired. But boy, I can still keep going. Amen. Look, look at it. Here it is. Even in the presence of God. Back to a scripture I read earlier. Ecclesiastes 311. He has made everything beautiful in his time. So I'm going to get I'm going to get his presence because he made a beautiful time. He has put eternity in the in their hearts. God says, my presence, I put eternity in your hearts. I put a I put a piece of me in your heart so you can understand this about the big picture, except that no one can find out the work that God does from beginning to end. That's why you got to still wait on me. My presence is there. You know, my work is there. God says, but I put it in your heart so you can connect with me so that you will know my presence is there. Even when you get tired, God says, I'm going to give you that extra boost you need. Then within the proper timing of God, there is the preparation of God. And I don't want you to miss this. The reason why some things have not taken place at the time when God, when you desired versus when God desired was God said, I had to prepare you for the blessing. It's OK. He does that to all of us. He does. God, God says, why in the world would I put a principle that you are to count up the cost before you go to war? Count up the cost before you build. Why would I put that as a principle in my word and not? Have that principle be at work in you before I hand you a blessing. God says, here's the one thing you will never accuse me of, of being a bad businessman. 
God said, no, no, no. I'm not finna put investment and blessing in the hands of people who aren't prepared to handle it. Amen. Oh, make no mistake about it. All right. You, 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 you got to understand something. You got to be prepared to handle the blessing that I have for you. See, you know, it's a horrible witness if God were to give us a blessing that we couldn't handle. Now, the enemy will do it and we'll claim it's the Lord, but, they, but, but it's not the Lord because it ends up getting squandered, getting wasted and never accomplishes what God desires. But God says is, I'll prepare you to handle the blessing. I'll prepare you to handle what I'm sending you. I'll prepare you for your assignment at the appointed time. In my proper time, God says, in that time that we're getting it together, I gotta make sure that you are able and ready to handle the blessing and all that comes with it. Amen. You know, one of the things, one of the reasons why God hadn't blessed some people financially is because they don't have a given spirit. God said, why would I do that? God said, first of all, you, don't, you may not manage well, but even, even that which I give you, you may manage, but God said, you don't do my work with it. So why would I, why would I bless you with, why would I bless you with increase? When with, with the little that you have, you still aren't a blessing. Preach around. I know that's, that's kind of bad. Ain't it? No, that, that's the word though. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's why, that's why the word says give and it shall be given you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over shall men give into your bosom. You know why? Because it was given to you and you gave. Right? See, here's the thing about that. What God says, it, even in his word, is that, that God is so clear that, that, that there is one who gives. Right. And lacks nothing. But there's one who withholds what is due and it comes to nothing. God said there's a principle in the world in, in the earth. I've got to prepare you on how to handle increase by watching how you handle little. If you faithful over a few things, I'll make you rule over many things. Biblical principles throughout. God says, listen, the blessing that you've been waiting on. God said, you got to allow me to prepare you for it so that when I give it to you, I don't have to repossess it. When I give it to you, you won't squander it. When I give it to you, you won't lose your mind and go do something sinful. God says, when I give it to you, you'll look to me and say, God, how do you want me to distribute it? How do you want me to utilize it? God, what is the kingdom purpose behind it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. God says, I'm going to prepare you. Here it is. Habakkuk chapter two, two through three. Then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain on the tablets that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. God said in, pre in preparing, you need to be able to write down the vision I've given to you. You need to write down. You need to be prepared. You got to put it down on paper for, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end, it will speak and it will not lie, though it tarries, though it may take a little bit of time. Wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. So here's the thing. What vision have you written down for you and God? Have you even walked with God, talked with God enough? To say, God, what is the vision that you have for my life? Let me write this down. See, everybody's quick to tell God what they want to do. God said, I, I ain't even gift you or equip that, equip you with that to be able to do that. That's, this, this is a you issue now. God said, well, when you decide, I'm going to prepare you. When you decide to have a kingdom agenda, then we can talk about it. Amen. Get thee behind me, Satan, for you don't have in mind the things of God. See, see, that's one of the things that Jesus was saying to Peter in, in that time because he had a, a lapse where he wasn't kingdom minded. He was Peter minded. We got to get to a place where we're not us minded, but we're kingdom minded so that God can use us and God can bring to pass that which he desired so it can accomplish what it is that he desires. Make no mistake about that. That's why God is preparing. Say, Lord, prepare me. Hey, oh, yeah. Lord, prepare me. Prepare me for the blessing. Prepare me for the ministry. Prepare me, God, to use me. Prepare me for the purpose. Prepare me for the plan you have for me, God, so that I might be a blessing to somebody else. And until I'm prepared and until I'm ready, God said, I can't bestow it upon you. So you got to learn to wait on me. In that timing, you'll find a level of preparation. I learned that. So much, not only in just my seminary journey, but even in that time between seminary and the time we started Spirit of God Christian Church, God was preparing me. And even along the way, as we grew and continue to grow in numbers, God is preparing for the things for the days ahead. 
you're always in preparation mode with God because God is preparing you for something greater and for the next thing that he has planned for you. Then number four, and I'm done within the proper timing of God. There is the promise of God. There is the presence of God. There's the preparation of God. But then there is peace in the procedure and purpose of God. Oh, yeah. When, when I trust the timing in it, I got to learn to get peace in the procedure and the purpose of God. Oh, yeah. How God's going to do it and why God's going to do it. Oh, I got to get peace in that. When I can settle there, I'm going to have peace in the timing of God. I'm going to be able to trust in the time of God. And while I'm waiting on God, I don't have anxiety. My impatience isn't kicking in to make me make rash and, and, and sinful moves because they're moves away from the will of God. What happens is, and I, then I don't miss God. I have peace in it because I trust God. I trust his procedure. I trust the way he does his business. I trust why he's doing this. Why is taking the time it's taking? Because I, I can trust God, right? All right, so, so look at this. I want to show you something in, in the word. Ecclesiastes chapter eight, verse five through six. Whoever obeys his command will come to no harm. First of all, I can stop right there. Not even on just the trust in the time of God. That's just a good word for you right there in the A clause. Whoever obeys his command will come to no harm. And the wise heart will know the proper time and procedure. Hold on just a minute. Look, whoever obeys his command, that means, that means we, we, we still taking it at the pace of God, right? So, so we're making sure that we understand we got the promise of God, we got the presence of God, we got the preparation of God. All of that is so I'll know the procedure and the purpose of God. But in the proper time, I got to learn to trust the procedure, the way God does it. Don't have to be the way you think it should be done. That'll mess you up every day, all day. Here we go. Whoever obeys his command will come to no harm. And the wise heart will know the proper time and procedure. It ain't ready yet. Amen. Verse six. For there's a proper time and procedure for every matter. Though a person may be weighed down by misery, even though I'm weighed down by misery because God, this is not comfortable for me. I trust in the procedure and the purpose. I got peace because God, you got it. You know, one of the things is my mother uh, is a fantastic cook. And, you know, every year I try to get her to make me some dressing for Thanksgiving. And so. Um, she, you know, a lot of times she'll come, she'll make whatever it may be. And then, so I've watched her and, you know, in years past, I watched her make this and she put all her ingredients in there and everything like that. But what I trip out on is the oven. Like she don't use no timer. <laughs> Amen. She just know when the time is. She got wisdom to know she's done it so beautifully, so wonderfully all these years that when she does it, she just knows that's the brown I need. <laughs> that it's ready now. She can look at the top of it and tell you that the bottom and the middle are good. I just want you to see this in the blessing of God. Her procedure, amen, and her purpose, obviously, amen, yields some great things. However, I want you to see what God does with us. When we have wisdom of God, it says, and the wise heart will know the proper time and procedure. The wise heart, that's the heart that is connected to God. That's the heart that is, that is anchored by the Holy Spirit. That's the heart that knows that God hears and God knows. That's the heart that can say, now is the time, God, because you gave me a sense of peace about this. That God, I know that now you said, now is the time. But God, I trust the way you're doing it. Amen. Don't I'm not going to miss a blessing because it does not line up with how I think the blessing should come. Oh, I've watched God take people and move people into blessings that they never thought possible. And he did it from left field in their mind. They never could have fathomed that a phone call would have changed their life from just a friend. And now they're walking in a purpose of God. They never could have thought a chance encounter at the grocery store would turn some things around. They never would have thought just scrolling on the internet or scrolling on YouTube would have given them a word from the Lord. Amen. And I thank God I've had me members of mine who are so valuable, who just God just led them the proper time and procedure. I trust God. But what he's doing, I know you've been faithful. I know you've been diligent. I know you put your time in, but it's the timing of God that will bring it to pass. And I have to trust the timing of God. Those of you out there who got children 
amen, who you know came by miraculous means, but they came at the time. God didn't give them to you until you were ready to have them. And even then, I know you thought you weren't ready, but God showed you you were ready. Those of you who are walking in blessings in your life, positions that you have, businesses that you have, relationships that you're in, you watch God bless at the proper time. And those of you who are still in that place where you're waiting, worship him. Oh, yes, yeah, stay in worship. Walk with him like Adam did in the cool of the day. Have your intimate moments and your intimate time with God. Spend some time in communion and communication with God. Work for him. Amen. Be about the kingdom business and then make sure you're a witness for him. Tell him still how good he is even while you're waiting. But I'm telling you right now, you got the promise of God that he's good to those who wait for him. You know, you have the presence of God in it. Make no mistake about that. But then let God prepare you. If it hasn't come to pass just yet, you're still in preparation mode. And that's OK, because the vision will come to pass. Oh, though it tarry, wait for it. But it will come to pass. And then I want you to get settled now in the peace of God in his procedure and his purpose that God, because you're allowing him, you're trusting him to do it his way in his time. God said, oh, that means you trust the way I'm doing it. You trust my procedure. God says, oh, then you're going to thrive. You'll prosper in the purpose. And I promise you this, not because of Randall, but because of his word. If you'll trust the timing of God, things will begin to align perfectly in your life. Make no mistake about it. And I said this earlier. I'm going to say this. And then I'm going to open the door to the church, if you will. One of the blessings, and I mentioned this earlier, you know, just, just really kind of lightheartedly about tithing. But you know, one of the promises of bringing the tithe into the storehouse is that your fruit won't cast forth before it's time on the vine. What God says is, is at the proper time that things will happen in your life because you honored me, you trusted me. In other words, you were ready for me to bless you. But God says the timing would still be perfect. That's another benefit. It's not why I do it, but that's still another benefit of doing it. The timing of God is promised to you there too. I just want to share that with you because the Lord put that in my spirit and I need for you to know that. Out there right now, here's what I want you to know. Yeah, God had you tune in today because the timing was perfect. What God says is your life got to turn now. You've been living the way you want to live. And God said, that's not going to work no more. God says, I'm giving you, I've given you time, but now is the time for you to turn and give your life over to me. Be submitted and surrendered, not by force, but by choice. But God says, look at how I orchestrated for you to hear this message today, that you got to trust my timing. But God says, listen, I want you to understand that there is a time for everything under heaven. And I want you to know that, that tomorrow isn't promised to you. But I want to take this time right now and tell you, I'll receive you just as you are. So if you're out there and you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, I want to invite you to have one and enter to one right now. Be submitted and surrender to him. Give your life over to him. Begin to live for him. And I'm telling you, things will begin to happen in perfect timing in your life when you learn to trust him and trust the timing of God in your life. You know it's a time now for you to stop living like you're living and to start living for God. For those of us who are believers, what God says is time is for us to be kingdom minded. I'm coming back to you with that next week. We got to be kingdom minded, not church minded, not worldly minded, kingdom minded. That's what we must be. Amen. And I want you right now and I'm going to pray with you and I pray that that the that the that that the Holy Spirit will minister to you within your heart and begin to pull you toward him and all that God has for your life. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name. We praise you. We honor and glorify you. We thank you for this day. And Lord, we pray right now for any person who desires to give their life over to you. God, they know that this is now the perfect timing in their life, that God, you have their attention. And now, God, they want to give you their heart. They want to give you their lives. So, Lord, if you hear them pray, Father, I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God, the Messiah sent into the world to save people of their sin. And I believe you raised him from the dead. I submit myself and I surrender myself to you. God, we know that you in no wise will cast them out. 
Now, Lord, we ask that you'll forgive them of their sins by the precious blood of Christ and allow them to walk into a new life in you, God, keeping pace with you for the t your timing is perfect. And for those of us who are believers, Lord, help us to have a kingdom mindset. Help us, God, to trust you in the timing of all that you do, to trust your to have peace as we trust your procedure and your process and your purpose in it all. God, give us and let us know, God, that we can hold to your promise, that, God, we have your presence. But, God, that in this time of preparation, God, you're preparing us for great things that you have at the proper time. Father, we pray that you will bless this service. We pray, God, that whomever views it will be blessed and edified from corporate prayer to song of worship to, God, our youth lesson, God, to the message today. Father, we give you glory. May you and you alone be glorified in it. And Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm Pastor Randall Knight, and if you just tuned in or if you tuned in late, if you tuned in halfway through the message, go back. Give your, you're going to miss a blessing if you, if, you, if you don't. Corporate prayer was a blessing. Song of worship was a blessing. The youth lesson was a blessing. And I believe that the word of the Lord was a blessing to you because it came from God's word. And I pray that you will go back. Be accountable. Be responsible. Go back. Amen. And, and view the service in its entirety so that you may be blessed. And ladies, today, 5 p.m., Lady Joyce Madison has an anointed word for you on Zoom. Go to the Church's Appen website, pull that link, and at 5 o'clock, I know that you're certainly going to be blessed. I'm Pastor Randall Knighton, Pastor of Spirit of God Christian Church. I pray you have a blessed week, a blessed life, as you walk further, trusting in the timing of God, for it is perfect. God bless you and God keep you. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's virtual service. We are so thankful for your presence on the broadcast and continued support to the ministry. It's because of your support that we're able to bring you the broadcast each week. If God puts it upon your heart to give, you may do so via the church's app, church's website, or cash app. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date on all Spirit of God media content. And download the church's app to stay informed on everything going on here at Spirit of God Christian Church. Remember, we may not know what tomorrow may bring, so let's just trust Him in all things.